Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to LearnX Teacher Talk. My name is John, and today we are focusing on physical sciences. In this session of uh, Teacher Talk, the objective is to discuss and to share ideas about how we would teach different ideas in physical sciences. And these should be related to classroom practice, so we'd really want to encourage you to participate. And we'll show you about how you can do that in a few seconds. So, welcome to today's discussion, today's show. Uh, we're going to be looking at the topics that are laid down for us to discuss and to deal with in Term 2. So, what are the resources that m the website, the Mindset Learn website, has to offer, and what are some other resources that you might find uh, that are useful for the teaching of topics in Term 2? Now, we're going to take both a short look as well as a long-term look, so that will enable us to plan better to use and integrate resources into our classroom teaching. Before we get into that discussion, let's quickly have a look at what's coming up for our learners. This is really important that you pass this information on for learners because there's momentum growing in terms of the learner shows and the advances and the, uh, the extra help they can get um, by tuning in and participating in the show. So what's the program for Learn Extra? Well, you will no doubt by now know that on Tuesdays we are dealing with physical sciences and every Tuesday we start with grade 10 and that's at 4 o'clock. At 5 o'clock is grade 11 and at 6 o'clock for an hour we have grade 12. These uh, shows, these lessons, are structured according to pace setters and the CAPS document as well, so that what learners have done in class, they can revise and they can ask questions in a non-threatening and a, a way that they can, can learn from each other and peers. Uh, of course, there is more. On Saturday, we're doing some revision work. So Saturday is the grade 12 day. And starting at 10.30 till 12 o'clock, there's one and a half hours of physical sciences revision, topics that have already been taught. It gives the learners a chance to just keep in touch and keep up to date with work that was taught in Term 1 and even some work that might have been required from Grade 11. But we're going to cover that between 10.30 and 12 on Saturday. That's the regular science slot. You'll see that's the same for Grade 10 and 11. But there's another Stein slot, and that is between 4 o'clock, 1600 and 1700 hours. If your learners aren't able to make a Tuesday evening, maybe they can tune in on a Saturday afternoon, can catch up with what they need to be on top of. If they've watched on, Saturday, on Tuesday and they just want to see it again to get clarity, we'd encourage them to do that. Now, on Sunday, we do this in the same time slots, from 10.30 till 12 and from 4 o'clock until 5 o'clock, we're doing exactly the same stuff uh, in terms of those are signed slots. Now, this week we're dealing with grade 10s, and uh, we're going to be dealing with topics that are related to um, the grade 10s at this stage. Uh, the repeat of the live show will happen between 4 and 5 o'clock. Now, all of those activities are supported by other formats as well, other platforms, other ways for us to interact. Because although television can show us and get things out very widely and spread it around, we'd like to hear from you. So there are different ways and different channels that learners can contact us. The first one is by telephone. The number to dial is 86 There is an email address, and this is linked to our help desk. Uh, where learners can put through their questions, where they're having difficulties. Now, this isn't a requirement to do homework because it takes a little while to get the answers. And it's also not a, a, an opportunity to ask for big questions like, please explain to me all about waves. No, we haven't got time to do that. It's not possible. Um, we'd encourage learners to go and look at the website and uh, watch the shows. But they've got a specific question. They're not understanding something. Maybe they've done a calculation and they haven't quite got it right. They can email us their question and where they're Go, where they think they're going wrong, what they've done to start the problem, and we will get back to them and uh, try and support them in that way. 
Then there's, of course, a very interactive platform that happens while the broadcast of the live shows is happening, and that is on Facebook. So if you encourage your learners to go to Facebook, forward slash learn extra there's a page for them to interact not only to interact with what's happening on the TV but to interact with other learners who are also going and watching and raising questions it gives an opportunity to learn together and that's really what we're wanting to do learn extra learning more learning together um, the same is true for us as educators we don't know it don't know it all we don't have all the answers so the opportunity for us to share ideas is also on facebook facebook.com forward slash learn extra teacher talk the help desk is also available if you would like to post an email to us drop us a line make a suggestion or you can leave us a phone message and we will follow that up as well please leave your contact details either an email address or a phone number so that we can get back to you right now that's the learn extra program up in a few minutes we're going to be looking at grade 10 11 and 12 topics the topics that we'll be covering in the learn extra program over the next 10 or so weeks so don't go away don't go too far because what we're going to be doing is going through resources that you can use in your classroom a valuable tool to inspire your learners to learn even harder and to get the concepts right the first time so don't go away we'll be back shortly Welcome back colleagues, this is Learn Extra Teacher Talk. Our focus today is on physical sciences. We're going to be dealing with the topics that are related to content that you'll be teaching in the next couple of weeks in Term 2 and having a look at the bouquet of resources that Mindset has to offer you. Now, we're going to get straight into that and we'll start by looking at the Grade 10 topics and just run through them. We're not going to go into too much detail today about what the topics are and, and the approaches that you might take to teaching them, although we might say one or two things related to that when we're dealing with the resources, the video or print resources that Mindset has available. So let's start with grade 10 and, and if we look at the CAPS document before we even launch into the topics, what you'll recognize on the CAPS document is that the term is broken down into uh, these topics. We are starting off teaching about particles substances are made of then we're moving on to dealing with physical and chemical change electricity and magnetism and also dealing with electric circuits now that's quite a, a, a range of topics but the time allocated in the caps documents gives sufficient time to get through these uh, topics in enough detail and I think that's the important thing we will gain experience as we do it more often but the time allocated in the CAPS document seems to be quite reasonable and many teachers that I've spoken to seem to be able to keep in touch with the allocation of time but the one thing that you do need to draw your attention that I need to draw your attention to in the CAPS document is that uh, as in the first term every term there are uh, practical investigations that we need to be taking cognizance of. So in the CAPS document, just very quickly, I want to remind you that um, what we have in term two is um, an experiment. Experiment in physics, if you've done the heating and cooling curve of water in term one, in, exper in, in term two, what we're going to be looking at is electric circuits with resistors in series and parallel. Now what's quite important here is this is not an investigation of Ohm's law, but this is rather just some, some simple practical taking of readings and drawing some conclusions when resistors are connected in different arrangements. Of course, learners need to have the investigative question, they need to have a hypothesis, they need to have some idea about controlling variables as well. Now for some people that experimental apparatus might be too much but in the CAPS document we're given a direction about alternatives and so I want to draw your attention to the alternatives. doesn't mean that you have to do only one or the other 
but the alternative is to look at the pattern and direction of the magnetic field around a bar magnet. Bar magnets are relatively easy to get hold of, and uh, you'll find that there are different quantities, different strengths of bar magnets, uh, even in our everyday lives. The, th the chemistry alternative is a little bit more taxing, and that's to show the conservation of matter experimentally, to prove it, to take some readings, and to design the experiment to do that. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we have a look at a, a bit of video clip uh, coming up soon. So that's the practical requirement, and I believe that right at the beginning of term, we should be starting to plan how we're going to implement the practical. What options have we got? What equipment is available within the school? And what uh, equipment do we need? Uh, this should be done well in time and well in, in uh, ahead of time so that learners can have opportunity to familiarize themselves with equipment and that you can possibly even schedule it over a period of days, uh, particularly if you haven't got lots of equipment. So there are some practical uh, requirements and some opportunities to do some planning. Now, it's not necessary to do all the experiments, but it, it is part of the teaching of physical sciences to encourage learners to think about experimental work. One of the alternatives to doing experimental work is showing video of those experiments. And we have a range of videos that cover exactly these experimental ideas. So I'm going to refer you to those as well. You might just want to watch the video with your learners, or you might want them to, uh, having watched the video, go and design something similar for themselves, given the limitations of apparatus that you have. So now let's get back to the content. We're starting off dealing with uh, teaching of particle substances are made of. Now this is a follow-on from the revision section that you would have done at the beginning of the year where we spoke about mixtures and elements and compounds. And I know that some people found that they spent too long on that section well, because it was meant to be a revision of grade 9 and the grade 9 isn't yet uh, fully caps aligned. So we did spend perhaps a little bit of time, but what are the key ideas that we want to get out of this section of particles that, that uh, substances are made up of? Well, we want to have learners very clear about what is an element. They need to understand what is a compound. They need to have an idea of writing some formulae, so they need to be able to write and read formulae. Okay, um, so we will need to look at those ideas, elements, compound, and formulae, writing those and making sure that they have a good conceptual model of what each of those means. Now, remember, we have spoken about the, the thinking in chemistry is not only to think about the uh, macroscopic, so it links again to the macroscopic, and the link between macroscopic and microscopic, and I'm not going to elaborate on that too much further. But simply to say that if you're wanting to enforce what particles, substances are made up of, then there are a range of videos, and I'd like to take you to our website so that you can see how to navigate and to get them. So uh, we will first of all recognize that if you land on the Learn Extra page or on the home page, you will have on the left-hand side a choice of different subjects. We're going to choose physical sciences, and uh, if you choose physical sciences, I've already done that, um, you will come to a range of opportunities or different areas of physical sciences. There they are, from chemical change, chemical systems, electricity and magnetism and so on. I'm going to look at matter and materials because matter and materials deals with this topic in the NCS document if you look back. Remember the NCS document is still relevant even though we've got the CAPS that tells us about the, the uh, policy related to um, the curriculum and the assessment thereof. So if we uh, align those two, they still talk to each other. You will notice that in the NCS document there is uh, the um, topic or the core knowledge area of matter and materials. So under matter and materials, particles that substances are made up of is a key component. Now, 
in, in terms of what we have in mindset or the mindset resources that are, are things that you could look at, I would recommend that you look at this series. If you haven't already done so, Investigating Materials, it does link to the earlier section. And even if your learners have understood what the difference is between a pure substance and a mixture, um, they wouldn't do, it wouldn't do them any harm to look at materials as they're used in the real world. Um, so investigating materials is a really interesting series, and it has some interesting um, uh, uh, topics that, w that are aligned to this particular uh, section of work to show you the topics. So we start off by looking at a material world and maybe that wouldn't be all that relevant for now. What, is a, what, what material is a better insulator? You probably have done something similar in um, term one. Classifying matter, and this is where it becomes uh, the important section for term two. A microscopic uh, model of metals, a microscopic metal, uh, model of non-metals, particles inside compounds, and the quest for the best material. Now, all of those are really important videos. They have teacher notes as well as learner notes that you can download. You can download these videos. So if I were to, to click on uh, the m microscopic model of, me uh, of metals, uh, we'll wait a few minutes, and you'll see that the video will play in the screen uh, if I allow it to do that, or I can click on the learner notes, and I'll just highlight that for you so you can see where you can do it. You can highlight the learner notes. If you click on that, you can also download the video. Now, I've gone ahead and downloaded the video. It's downloadable in multiple formats, but I want to just show you one particular part that I think is a really important concept and a microscopic model that many learners will not get from a textbook. And that's why video is important. That's why video is powerful as a learning tool because it helps frame what ideas learners have in their minds and they can link it on to, to something that is scientifically accurate. So if I just take this little section of video, I'm going to, to close um, that down and hope that we can just watch a little bit, uh, pull it through, uh, it's starting to play, um, it's dealing with, and this is the model I wanted you to see, uh, we've got kernels of positive charge and the electrons flowing around them as a negative charge. Uh, this is a, an ideal opportunity to discuss with your learners models of matter so that they can begin to understand what particles are making up matter and how the link between the macroscopic, the microscopic and even the symbolic work together. And so uh, there is uh, some really interesting uh, visual material for your learners to engage with and if you can show it to them and then get them to explain well using this model how do we know that metals are good conductors uh, the video does deal with that sort of approach as well so I think we've covered to a certain extent particle substances are made of now I want to move on to the the next topic that you'll be teaching in a couple of weeks time and that's on physical and chemical change. Now, physical change, we're all aware of, is the change between solid, liquid, and gas, or from gas to liquid to solid, um, and the names and the terminology associated with those. But it's sometimes not as straightforward as just saying, oh, we think that this is a physical change. What's the difference between a physical change and a chemical change? It's an energy question, as well as looking at what this nature of the reactants and the, the final products are. Um, and so we're starting to introduce some terminology that's going to become really important. Now, as we move through this particular topic, there is again a mindset series that you might want to have a look at. I'll just go back to, to our website and uh, pick it up. If you look under chemical change now, um, instead of uh, looking under matter and materials, you will notice that under chemical change, there are a whole range of videos that are not only relevant for grade 10, but for grade 11 and 12 as well. Let's f hone in on the grade 10 one, because that's what our key focus is. And 
I'm particularly going to mention the physical and chemical change video series, um, but also to note that there are uh, another three set of series um, that deal with the balancing of equations, representing chemical change. Uh, that's all part of this topic. Uh, it does it in a, a traditional way, but it shows you lots of real experiments. Uh, for example, uh, burning group 1 metals in pure oxygen, uh, putting group 1 metals into water, putting group 2 metals into water and seeing what the result is. Dealing with some non-metal re reactions as well. So there's lots of video clips that you could edit out of these video series, download them, use Movie Maker and, and get yourself a whole library of uh, uh, experimental clips. Now, if I wanted to show you one other thing under physical change, uh, physical and chemical change for grade 10, um, and that is that um, one of the sections um, deals with uh, the understanding of the composition of the law of constant proportion, as well as the, com, uh, the, the conservation of mass. Now, uh, conservation of mass is an extremely important idea, and uh, you will remember that what we said earlier, that it's one of those practicals that uh, we're going to be required, or we could use as an option. Now, in the series on physical and chemical change, there, is, there are two uh, videos that I would recommend you have a look at. Um, and I just want to, to show those and point those out to you. We deal with the basics of what physical ke uh, changes, chemical change, uh, solutions, investigating solutions, solutions and energy. And then the one that is a really a beautiful video is, is this one on um, uh, the red-brown metal. And what we're doing there is, is having a careful look at copper and dealing with the extraction of copper and the reaction of copper and oxygen and seeing how, in a practical way, um, measuring the mass of the products and of the original uh, ingredients, how that there is a constant proportion. This is, a this is carried on in the, second, in the sixth video of the series on the conservation of mass. And we do a whole range of, of qualitative things without extending the idea too far into the mole, although the mole concept is something that we recognize our learners should at this stage be familiar with, um, but under the old curriculum, pre-CAPS, we didn't necessarily mention the mole. This uh, video here, session six, shows you an, an approach to take that you could do in your classroom for that practical assignment. You could get your learners to observe and ask them to make observations, to tabulate, and to write up a practical based on the videos that, or the sequences that you would see in that particular video. Now, I think I've said enough about that because time is moving on. Uh, if we just quickly talk about electricity and magnetism and electric circuits, this is clearly a physics topic. Now again, there are four different series that I want to point you to that are mindset series. Um, if we're dealing with physics, uh, let's just make sure that we've got uh, the, the topic back on our home page. It looks like we need to just refresh that. Uh, and we're there. So under electricity and magnetism, um, you will notice that we've got a, as I mentioned, four different series. Introduction to electric current, potential difference and resistance. Those two go with electric circuits. And then magnetism and electrostatics, those are series that really cover practically uh, the experimental work as well as an understanding, seeks to show an understanding of the important concepts that are required for learners to understand what is a field, what's an, the difference between an electrostatic field and an electric field, to understand what an electric charge is. We even show the learners how a fundamental craft generator works. And so those that are not as fortunate to have Fundercraft generators readily accessible within their school, they can see this and they can have a, a, a sense of what happens when we use a Fundercraft generator. So 
I would really encourage you to, to have a look at those series. The last thing I wanted to, to mention uh, about electric circuits is this is a fundamental section of work. It builds up. Uh, obviously having started in grade 9 and we move on to grade 10 and we will continue to add to the complexity of the circuits in grade 11 and grade 12. But what's important is that we give our learners lots of practice. In one of the last videos of the series on potential difference and resistance, we have a little quiz. And I would encourage you to get your learners to watch the quiz because they will find it extremely challenging. Uh, they will find it exciting to try and beat the cl countdown clock that is shown in the video to make sure that they've got their concepts of each of the problems that can be asked at this level all sorted out. Right, well, we've covered grade 10 in quite a lot of detail. But I think at this point we'd like to go to a short break. When we come back, we'll have a look at what resources Mindset has to offer if, as you begin to plan the teaching of grade 11 and grade 12. So don't go away. I'll be back with you in a few seconds. Bye. For now. Welcome back, colleagues. It's good to be with you. This is a Learn Extra Teacher Talk. My name is John, and we're focusing on physical sciences this afternoon. Now, uh, in our teaching of physical sciences, we're looking at the topics that are going to be taught or planned to be taught and that we're going to be broadcasting in Term 2. What resources are available? What uh, videos, what print material could you use and incorporate into your lesson to make your planning a little bit easier. Now we've already dealt with the topics that are going to be taught for grade 10. So what about grade 11 and grade 12? Well, let's have a look at grade 11. Um, and for although this isn't standardized across the country, many people follow this particular outline. And uh, when we deal with chemical change, we're starting to deal in grade 11 uh, with the quantitative aspects of chemical change, and that means the mole. Now, there's, n there's no getting away from this learners uh, over the years, and it's not just in South Africa, have many misconceptions about the mole. And we need to work really hard as we introduce the mole to learners that they've got a clear understanding of the calculations that are uh, important and they can retrieve the information from questions. Uh, obviously moles lead on to stoichiometry um, and the importance of using ratio and the equations and that's all going to be important when we look at grade 12 work as well. So I would really encourage you to take time to make sure that your learners have got the concept of the mole really well bedded down and they haven't got too many misconceptions about it. That they understand that there are different aspects and they can convert very easily from the mass of a substance that is one mole, the number of particles, whether it be atoms, molecules, um, electrons, protons, neutrons, um, and the volume that's related to those. That they've got those interactions and they understand how to manipulate those. They can do it either by using the formula or by ratio, and they can apply these to, to equations. They should also at this stage be able to calculate empirical formula and molecular formula and uh, as I've as you've probably guessed um, there are mindset video series that are related to those so if you go on to the website and you look under chemical change you will see that there is a series called uh, chemical calculations and I want to just take you through that very briefly so that you've got a sense of what, what it's all about. We start off by dealing with atomic mass and the difficulty and the, uh, the problem that chemists have faced over the years of being able to find the mass of a substance, uh, a particle like an atom, which is terribly, terribly small, not uh, possible to, uh, to, to measure the mass of that, that particle. So what do we do? We have to introduce a relative scale. And so these videos deal with the idea of a relative scale, and, and I believe they've got the, the concept really well thought through. Then we deal with mass and the mole and the relationship between mass and mole, the mole and number, mole and gases, 
moles in solution, percentage composition and empirical formula. Really interesting um, experiment that comes in here where we also go and have a look at uh, some high-tech equipment and go and visit a, a working lab. Uh, moles and chemical reaction, looking at stoichiometric ratios and then applying the mole relationships to an interesting problem to make a prediction about what products could be formed uh, in a particular reaction or particular set of reactions. So uh, this series uh, Although we sometimes think of chemical calculations and the concept of the mole as being something that is tedious and, and you've got to drill and practice, well, uh, introducing a video during something that is seen to be a little bit more difficult can enhance learners' attitude to learning help them prepare a little bit better. So there are a number of reasons for using video. Uh, one of them is to show um, r stuff that isn't available within the classroom. And, and that series does do that rather well because it takes them out and looks at a, a laboratory, looks at, at scanning instruments that can then determine the chemical composition and shows how calculations can be done. But it also does pra lots of practical calculations that you might want to repeat if you have the time available to do that. Now, th the other section or the other topic that comes in this section of chemical change is on energy and chemical change and then also on types of reactions. Remember that and at this point, types of reactions, we're looking at redox, we're looking at acid base, and then we're looking at the organic reactions of substitution, elimination, and addition. Uh, in so there are our types of reactions. Now, we've combined these two topics, energy and chemical change, into one series. And there is really some interesting footage uh, in terms of classifying chemical reactions and shows some, some really interesting stuff around different chemical reactions because we've been, we were fortunate when we filmed this to have available some data loggers. And I'd like to just show you uh, an example of some of that footage, uh, just play a section of it, um, and uh, not going to listen to the sound, but you can see the computer is over there, and we use a really simple set of, uh, of um, apparatus. We're looking at seeing a temperature change when you make a solution, and that temperature change is recorded um, on a scanner, uh, which is then linked to the computer, and you can plot the change in temperature. Uh, this is real chemistry, and it's, uh, it's really important that learners see it. Uh, out of this discussion, we begin to understand there are different types of chemical reactions, those that release more energy than is put in initially, initial conditions of temperature, uh, the temperature increases. Uh, then there's the case where the initial conditions, the temperature decreases. We define those as exo and endothermic reactions. And so uh, those series are, are really uh, available for you to download and to have a look at and to make sure that um, your learners are inspired by them. Now, uh, the section on types of chemical reactions, uh, I just wanted to make one point there. We've dealt with redox in a traditional way. We've dealt with the assigning of oxidation numbers uh, as well in terms of this. Acid and bases, we've done some reactions. There are additional series on acids and bases that are for your uh, enjoyment and for your learners uh, extra information. Lots of um, experimental work that comes into that series. I can just point that one out to you. So uh, if we go back to um, here, we're dealing with grade 11 at the moment. Uh, just have a look here. Classifying chemical reactions and then there's acids, bases and acids, bases and salts. Um, a whole range of, of experimental stuff that you can show your learners and get them excited about chemistry and learning chemistry and I'm sure that will will improve their their enthusiasm towards the subject. Now we've included um, one other section in our broadcast and that is the section on electromagnetism because um, many people have struggled to 
cover the electricity and the electromagnetism in the first term. So we've included it in our broadcast so that learners can have a chance to revise electromagnetism. But if, if, if you've already taught them Faraday's law, that's not a problem. But just wanted to point out that I think that there is a magnificent uh, section of or series of videos under electromagnetism that, that you might want to have a look at. And that's uh, right over here, um, electromagnetism, uh, introduction to electronics and electro, uh, electrostatics. Those are all relevant to your grade 11 learners. Now, I, I know that we're um, dealing with a, a difficult concept when we come to electromagnetism because we deal with both the, uh, the effect of an electric current the idea of it, that the, an electric current produces a magnetic field but in the same way we also recognize that a moving magnetic field um, a moving magnetic field or a changing magnetic field can produce an a, a, an electric current or induce an electric current in a closed circuit. It can create an EMF. Now, uh, th the fact that you've got uh, one input where it requires um, the movement of a charge producing a magnetic field and the other one where it requires the movement or the relative motion of a magnetic field to produce an electric current is one that learners really grapple with. Now, we've tried to simplify this with using lots of animations, lots of graphics, and we've been really particular about showing something really visual for learners to look at. Um, I would encourage you to have a look at that series on electromagnetism, because even if your learners have been taught, uh, you've already taught them Faraday's law, you'll find that they will have a fresh appreciation before they write the, the June exams to be able to answer those questions uh, more carefully. It also allows them to see the importance of transformers and deals with transformers, takes them into a power station, shows them the problems of uh, distribution of current. We do an interview with an electrical engineer from Eskom and uh, discusses with us the real, very, uh, the very important issues of transformation and making sure that we don't use up uh, too much or you waste. Uh, current that is generated or electric power that's generated. Right, now l let's uh, wrap up our section. I know that grade 12s are eager to get to the June exams and even probably starting to focus on, on the prelims and we recognize that the Learn Extra program that we run on a Saturday uh, is directly related to exam revision. Our programs during the week and our live, live shows as well can help with preparing learners for exams. Remember, winter school is coming as well, where we will uh, focus specifically on exam type problems on sections that we've already covered up until this point of the year. But it's also time for learners to develop new knowledge. And so I believe it's really important that we don't just in our grade 12 year just see the exam as the end. We really want to help learners to, to uh, grasp the concepts and to get an understanding of what the physics and the chemistry is all about. So uh, in, our, in our schedule, we'll be dealing with the following topics. Um, this is aligned to some of the pace setters, provincial pace setters, starting off with Doppler effect. Then we'll move on to diffraction and to interference. Now, that's the physics section, and then uh, the chemistry section deals with rates of reaction, chemical equilibrium, and electrochemistry. So uh, there's a lot that we could say about all of those because they all have their own specific uh, difficulties in teaching. But what I want to show you in the little time that we've got left is where you can get resources for those. So let's just make sure that we've got the chemical change one sorted out. And I'm going to start with these first of all because they are relatively new. Um, electrochemistry 
and rates of uh, rates in chemical equilibrium are, as I've mentioned, relatively new mindset series, and they've got outstanding uh, demonstrations and graphics that will really liven up your classroom teaching. So if you're looking for examples of how to, to measure the rate of a reaction, there's a, an experiment done by learners, assisted by a teacher, supervised by a teacher, where they look at the reaction of um, uh, sodium thiosulfate and sulfuric acid to produce the precipitate that uh, will cover over and c discolor um, a, a beaker changing it from, from uh, uh, clear um, and colorless to being uh, slightly yellow. Uh, we can investigate and time the rate of reaction in this particular experiment. We also do a number of fascinating um, chemical equilibrium experiments. We're using the cobalt chloride experiment where your learners might just see this in a textbook and say this is pink and this is blue and they're not sure how the two go together, what it really looks like. They might be thinking they're telling stories here in the textbook, uh, but if you see the video you will see it happening in real life and it, it really is quite amazing. We look at the changing of concentration, we look at the ch effect of changing temperature, and use this to explain and demonstrate uh, Le Chatelier's principle very clearly. So um, that series on rates and chemical equilibrium is something that I, I really do believe that will be of extreme advantage to your learners. The section on um, electrochemistry uh, is also one that uh, I would recommend that you have a look at and if we just have a touch on that if you open up uh, the section should go there uh, just wait for a second uh, this section deals with uh, the galvanic cell as well as the electrolytic cell. Now, one of the problems with um, the galvanic cell and this whole section on electrochemistry is that it's often difficult to see what's happening at a microscopic level. And that's the advantage of these videos uh, and, and the ones on rates as well, is that we've been able to get some really accurate diagrams drawn, uh, animations of the, what's happening, the microscopic processes that are happening. And once your learners have those uh, pictures, those mental images in their minds, you'll find that they will be able to answer their questions so much better. Now, what about the, the other sections that we need to talk about? And that is the physics sections. Now, I, I know that this is probably what you're teaching uh, earlier. Um, so, what does mindset, uh, what videos does mindset have? What video series does mindset have in terms of dealing with the Doppler effect, diffraction, and interference? Well, um, the series that you're looking for is called uh, 3D, uh, it's called w Waves in the Real World, and it, it really tries to incorporate the section under 3D waves. So it's, it's waves in the real world, and you'll be amazed to find uh, a range of, of videos. There are three videos dealing with the Doppler effect and three dealing with interference and, in, uh, and diffraction. Again, an animation-rich, colorful uh, interviews with experts. We go and see, and you'll be able to hear the difference in the sound of, of um, uh, an um, an ambulance moving towards you and moving away. Um, you'll also be able to see it visually. We've been able to reconstruct the Doppler effect in a ripple tank. Moving the source, you're able to see how the waves join to, uh, pack together in front of the moving source and the wavelength increases behind the moving source. The, the problems that are related to these are also useful. Uh, we also look at the applications of the Doppler effect to medicine, to um, looking at how uh, radar works and, and how uh, trapping people that are exceeding the speed limit, uh, have an interview with people related to that. Also talk to astronomers to explain to us uh, the, the idea of the red shift and the blue shift. So we've got a, a really good sense of that. And then uh, the last topic, not to um, harp on it too much, but just to, to say that there are lots of practical questions around interference 
points in diffraction, and we show these as well. Now remember, for all the grade 12 material on our website, there are also study notes. And I would really encourage you to get your learners to look at those study notes, because there are lots of questions from past exam papers, and uh, they'll be able to download those. They can also order those and, and make sure that they get into a practice, a, a habit of practicing um, study uh, techniques that they can be adequately prepared for the final exam. Now, I, I hope you've got a big overview for this term, and it's been my pleasure to introduce you to these topics, and I hope you're able to take the mindset resources and put them into your classroom. Please let us know how that goes. We'd love to hear from you. From me, John, goodbye.